Hello everyone, welcome back to Roll. Yesterday we did five dice with eleven. And what I think I'd like to do, just for a couple of runs in a row, is just kind of manipulate how the five dice we choose appear, sticking with the low numbers, just to see how the scores compare. And so what I'm going to do this time is, rather than doing a number for a Yahtzee, I'm going to take the numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 as the five dice that we will build after our initial die for scoring. And we will build a five die run out of those numbers because then three of those numbers are prime in seven, five, and three. All of them are lower than 12 and we'll only have five dice. So hopefully we can build a decent score with that. But of course, we'll still have all of the stuff like highest die modifier, uh, sorry, highest die times two, factor 50 multiplier, all of that good stuff. And we'll see how that compares to yesterday, which is currently our high score. So I'm hoping that perhaps as we experiment with a few different things here, we can kind of increment that high score up bit by bit rather than just finding one best way to get the highest score possible because I think it's going to be a bit more interesting to increment that high score rather than just trying to get the absolute highest thing before doing anything else. So I'm going to finish building this up to 97 as is tradition. Haven't seen a single re-roller for it yet which is unfortunate. It's going to make getting through here a little bit more expensive in terms of numbers of rolls spent to do it. But we will get this to a 97. And then once we've done that, we will get up to our third tier of shop, find some re-rolls, some multipliers, and then work on building our little tiny run. So I'll finish this die off and then get back to you. All right, so here we are. I think it's a plus five we want. Yes, on 92. Amazingly, all this way, not a single re-roll face or re-roll to be added to our faces, which is slightly unlucky I imagine we're going to get to our first shop with far fewer rolls than we would like but I'm not going to sit and do restarts over and over again forever I will pick up something here to build a 7 just because 7 is going to be the largest number we need in our run that does not come on a standard die so I'll pop a 7 there then we will upgrade to the third tier of shop. Now the question I'm asking myself in the back of my mind as we build this is, is it gonna be better to have a five dice run that's getting the multiplier for having five dice divided by 50, or 50 divided by five is a 10 times multiplier but if we had, say, 25 dice, the run could be multiplied by 25, and then that whole thing could be multiplied by 2. So there's so many different ways to implement multipliers in different places. I don't know what the best math on that is for how to hunt down those incremental bits of score. Right, that's done, that's done. We now go to our next tier of shop. We're getting through rolls very quickly here. Just how it's going to have to be. Now we want to find a set all die faces somewhere along the line would be ideal. But I will grab a 5x here just quickly. Let's stick that on our 7 there. We'll take a 10x, stick that on, let's see, we're doing 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. So we'll stick that over on the 6 there. I will take fewer than 6 die bonus 300% here. It's obviously one of the main ways we get to score in this way without 
uh, it's one of the main ways we get to score with this strategy where other strategies wouldn't. That's what I was trying to say. Words are hard. Question is, what else do we want right now? And are we going to do the strategy of putting a bunch of voids with our center die here, or probably on the die with the seven, in fact, being the largest number in the run? For right now, we're just going to have to take what we can get. That's very interesting. These are both passives that we certainly do want. I wonder if it's investing too much in passives too soon. But we'll pick these up. It shouldn't be too hard to get the rest of the run that we want later, given that the numbers are going to come on the dice that we're buying. So let's just keep sticking multipliers wherever we can. We're going to need all of the dice to re-roll if we want to get the run to occur on every roll because the first roll rolls all of your dice, obviously. But then the dice that we have set with re-roll twice modifiers, they will roll the second and third times, but these guys currently won't. And so if you had a run of five dice, but only two of them were re-rolling multiple times, you don't get to use the other dice that you don't roll on the subsequent re-rolls so they don't apply to the runs you try to build. So you need all of your dice to roll as many times as possible. That is important. We could pick up no weights bonus, but I think we're all right in terms of earning potential at the moment. I'm just wondering if we're likely to find any voids on this tier of shop or whether it's the next tier of shop we need for that. I am not certain. But currently, our scoring is quite high. So we've got 7, 6, 5. Let's build up on the 4 here. Then the 3 will be on the last die. But we can throw multipliers just about anywhere and receive some level of benefit from them. Let's see. This die is going to become all sevens eventually, so we can just put anything on the primes. We'll get this one re-rolling in triplicate instead of in duplicate. Uh, runs re-rolling twice, we can probably work with that a bit. Square dice is not going to impact us, given that we're only going to have five dice in the end. But let's just keep putting multipliers on stuff. Because we can, basically. Uh, numbers smaller than 13 plus 1,000%. That's going to be important. And probably investing too much into our passives far too early. So why not go whole hog on just everything then? Clearly, our scoring has become immensely higher. Now, we haven't seen any set all dice to be the same face yet. Which is slightly concerning. We're going to need lots of those. There's a void. We will stick that... Uh, we'll stick that there with that 7, because the 7 is the highest number in the run. There is BOGO. There is Factor 50 Multiplier. There's a 5x. Shouldn't be adding them to the 7 because the 7 is going to be our die with void. So that's going to get a void face eventually and be not worth anything extra to us. But we'll keep sticking numbers on everything else while we can. see none of that is stuff we need we do still need to upgrade our shop once more eventually 
What I'd really like to see is some voids. There's settled die faces for the first time. Let's do that over here on the sixes. Then we can do the fives. Uh, this one is going to become fours in a little while. What's re-rolling in triplicate? You're in duplicate, you're in triplicate, you're in triplicate. So let's do triplicate over here. Do we want anything with a shop weight on it? I don't think we need it, especially none of what we're looking at right now. There's run length multiplier. This is an important part of our run building strategy. Every die in a run will be multiplied by the quantity of dice in the run. So that's a five times multiplier once we've built our run of five. There's another void to join the seven over there. We'll take a 3x multiplier onto any face that doesn't currently have one. There's another BOGO that does us no harm at all. 765, should we do the fours? I guess we're going to do the fours. We want a glue on that guy there because it's re rolling in triplicate now. We want that seven to appear as often as possible. And we'll get a 10x on that. You're re-rolling in triplicate, you're re-rolling in triplicate, you're re-rolling in triplicate. They are now re-rolling in triplicate as well. Any faces without a modifier can get one. Right, we just need to see a few more voids, I think. And then we can upgrade to our final tier of shop. grab anything else useful along the way of course although there's going to be less and less stuff that is particularly useful as time goes on particularly if we don't get the combined face multipliers which is one of the important things we need Everything is re-rolling in triplicate already that we currently have. So now I just want, was it two more voids? Not going to worry about getting a 10 times previous roll multiplier because of course we took numeric only multiplier. So only our numeric faces give us extra value. We can stick some glue on a 10x there. Rerolls are getting quite expensive. But, you know, that's fine. We'll deal with it. Uh, glue on that 10x there. Uh, fewer than six dice, reroll and triplicate. We're basically going to get that soon enough anyway. Glue there on a times 10. Just avoid now, please. Well, a couple. But one reroll per shop reroll. One die roll per gaining of a shop refresh is not bad. That's what I meant, vaguely. We will take Scavenger, though. That will give us some extra free rerolls along the way. And now I would just like to see a couple of voids, please, game. Obviously, we'll pick up any of the useful passives we see along the way as well. There's a void. 
that's going to go on three, the smaller of the prime numbers on that die. And then once we get that last void, we will go up to the final tier of shop. Set our full run in place. We'll take no weights, 200% extra. I will not be surprised if I have rolled past a void already. There we go. So, void on here. Then we can upgrade the shop immediately. We got our last die. We can set all the numbers on that die to three. Then we have our five die run of three, four, five, six, and just the one seven over here, but that's the highest number in our run, and it's benefiting from all of the voids that exist. So we want some re-rolls on that bottom die now. We want that one re-rolling in triplicate, as are all of the other dice at the moment. And then once that is re-rolling in triplicate, then we can worry about gluing down one of the faces. I don't think we need another BOGO at this point. There's re-roll in triplicate. So now every die will re-roll three times. So now we're really just looking for good passives, another glue. There's a glue for us. So we'll glue down the three that has the times 10 on it. Any dice that don't have a glue. You have a glue, you have a glue, you have a glue, you have a glue, and you have a glue. Scoring is going to be much bigger in just one moment now that we've found our numeric only times 50 multiplier. It's going to be a lot of rolls to buy it, but when we do, our scoring is going to increase massively. We'll take a 10x for another number because there's always a chance that we roll that number first. Right, so now I think we're basically just looking for useful passives like reroll bonus. That's going to be a good one. 10x is, of course, bigger than. Let's have a look on our prime dice here 3x. We don't need more rerolls, we don't need lottery stuff. There's a rigged machine that I could not find early in my first game on the new patch. We haven't seen top three yet. Have we seen factor 50 multiplier yet? We have, so we're already benefiting from that one. What would be really nice, and I don't think it's something that we would see here, but if you had a great big panel on the side of just all the passives, and as you buy them, they move from the available passive pool on the left to the purchased passive pool on the right. So you can remind yourself which of the passives that you really want for your run that you're missing. We're definitely still missing run multiplier. We have, uh, let's have a look. We have this guy, run length multiplier. But there's another one for run value multiplier, which will multiply all of your dice by the highest number in your run. So the highest number in our run at the moment is seven. So it would multiply all of our dice by seven, which would obviously be really good. Primes for an extra 500% is great because 60% of our dice are prime numbers. Of course, that's seven, five, and three. 
Don't think we need passive hunter. Yahtzees for a thousand percent is not going to be on the cards today. There's run multiplier. So add a every die in a run will be multiplied by the highest number in the run. So that's going to increase our scoring every roll by times seven. Still haven't seen top three. We don't need single group effect because we don't have any group effects. We only have runs. There's top three. And after top three, I'm not sure what else we're really missing. I know we have not got combined run, uh, combined face multipliers yet. I know we're missing that one. No square numbers here, no single group effects. We're up into the E16 values, just barely. Although at the rate that we are scoring, I don't anticipate that getting much higher. Could be said that there was an argument for going for a nine length run. We would lose out on the bonus from fewer than six dice for 300% and 500% here. But we could get the square bonuses for being three by three makes nine. And then we could also still benefit quite highly from the factor 50 multiplier. Of course, we're getting a reroll every 33 rolls for free. There's 100% extra thanks to no 99s bonus. Question is, is it too late now? Because we're getting close to probably not having quite enough rolls to get back to where we need to be after what we spend. This is 5.8 to the E16. It's gonna be a race. So we're going to have about 400 rolls left here, but once we buy that, what we now want to do is start cramming those as quickly as we can onto our 7 here. Because the 7 is of course getting all the benefits of the voids as well. So that's where the largest implication for extra growth on our multipliers probably is going to come from at this stage. Unfortunately, though, we don't have very many rolls left to try and get this to a times 99. We don't have a great deal of shop refreshes to find extra multipliers either. So if we could get this to times 99 and then get a few rolls in, I'd be pretty happy. I just don't know if we don't see a few 10Xs and 5Xs, I doubt we're gonna get there as quickly as we would need to for this. Particularly when we're only gonna get a few more shop refreshes. Now we have hit E17, there's a 10X. So now we have to find the fine line between rolling for more score and making more purchases. So 181 rolls left, 1.8 here is not too much. That puts us at times 63. None there at all to add to our modifiers. 2.2 E16. So that's going to go from 193 to 
one seven one is that right just about seems fine by me i don't think we're going to get to e18 though that's basically the next big jump for us in scoring this will be our last reroll and to buy anything now would be foolish because we're not going to generate enough score for its cost in 16 more rolls so we will roll down and our last roll 3.484812e17 I think that is an improvement over our previous score. Yes, it is. We were on 6.2 E16. We're now 3.4 E17. So that's going to be G Lord UK. And we are now currently in 31st. Some very big scores at the top. How legitimate or not they are, I have no idea. I don't understand how people use Cheat Engine. It's not something I've ever looked into, nor do I have any real desire to. But there is us in 31st place, lots of room to grow, still plenty of chance to get on the leaderboard with an exponent score if you want to. And look, 94th place, sitting right above a gnome. It's just rude, isn't it? At least they haven't eclipsed the moon yet, although those two... Well, you know. Right, that's going to be all for today. Thank you guys ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.